<clears throat> so, so good morning. So for all of you who are just joining us here, my name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for uh, McNeil, and I'm also uh, the owner of the Outside Digital Art and Design. And um, I, I straddle kind of a weird uh, fence for McNeil. Um, I, I run my own business, but I also work for McNeil. Uh, and, um, and so I make a living off of Rhino. I make a living teaching and supporting Rhino and, uh, and kind of function in an advisory role. Uh, voice of the user kind of function, um, and and the McNeil guys are kind enough to let me to let me do these videos. So um, which which I really enjoy and I hope uh, are are kind of useful. So if you're if you haven't seen any of my videos before, um, we do things a little bit differently, or I do things a little bit differently. Um, is um, what I want to do is build a simple model from scratch. I want to show you the thinking behind it. I want to show you um, anything that would be a roadblock to me approaching this model from the very first time. Um, I'm assuming would also be a roadblock to somebody else at some point. And so what we try to do is, um, well, what I try to do, I keep saying we, but it's me. Um, what I try to do is is to is to put myself in your shoes and and basically start a project from the very beginning, jump into it. If I run into a roadblock, I'm not going to click a layer and then poof, actually, you know, have something magically Julia Child style uh, pop out of the oven perfectly. So so we run into roadblocks, we break things. Um, I've had the software crash on me. <laughs> I've had I've had models go horribly awry. I've had really, really good videos where we've done things and, and learned a lot together. I've also had absolute positive train wrecks. So um, it, it's all kind of in the spirit of of us showing you how the sausage is made and, and me trying to share as many of the tips and tricks that I've learned over 20 years of, of, uh, of being a professional modeler um, and designer in this business. Um, so so buckle your seatbelts. Bear with me if we run into issues. We're going to run into issues, and and we'll solve them together. And hopefully, um, you'll learn something not only about how to build, but uh, uh, how to how to survive if something goes splattering right into the wall. So um, this is Rhino Six, by the way. If uh, if you're joining us with Rhino Five, that's fine. There are a few features in Six. Um, if I run into something in Six that is specific to Six, I'll try to point that out. Um, but if you're working in five, don't worry about it. You should be able to get just about everything except for the rendering stuff. Um, that uh, the rendering stuff is all new in six, and so, um, and then some history and some other things. But like I said, when I run into a, a specific six feature, I'll try to uh, point that out and make it obvious to everyone. So, all right. So what we're going to build today is this um, is this rotten little sketch I did the other day about some sort of little consumer product thing, um, a laser tape measure. Uh, I have this tape measure sitting on my desk and I've had it for sitting here for, it seems like a very long time. And I was looking at it and I thought, well, geez, that'd be kind of an interesting thing to try and model. Um, <clears throat> and so I, I took a stab at, at trying to come up with some things that would be, that would be interesting. Um, you know, this grip, maybe we'll talk about doing some sort of in molded detail. We'll talk about doing some display stuff where we add some decals. Um, we'll talk about doing some inlaid, um, you know, molded in kind of text and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, we'll just we'll just go through it. So I scratched this sketch out yesterday. <clears throat> I have not built it before, so we'll jump in and just and just give it a shot. So the way the way that I always start all my models is basically. I'll pick a view, um, I'll go to my layer stack, I will make an image layer just by double clicking and changing the name. And then I'll just move this checkbox down here so that, so that when I run the picture command, which is the new command for bringing stuff in, it used to be picture frame, it used to be background bitmap and then we don't like background bitmap anymore so we switched to picture frame and then we shortened it and now it's just picture. So I'm gonna go find the sketch which is this one, and I'm just going to plop it in the scene. And and one of the new things that you'll notice is that it's it's automatically um, 
uh, proportion constrained. It used to be you have to help you you had to hold shift when you dropped a picture frame into the scene, but now it's proportion constrained, so we can just drag it into the scene and drop it. Now <clears throat> I didn't I didn't look at this, but let's look at this just to start with because it's good practice. If we go tools, options, units, I'm I'm in Northern California. I'm in the U.S., so I'm one of the like you know nine people in the world that still uses inches, unfortunately. But this, so I'm going to be working in inches. My absolute tolerance is 0 .001. 0.001 is kind of tight for, for an inches model. I'm going to let it roll, but, um, but it's not the end of the world if we run 0 0.01. This model is big enough that it shouldn't have, you know, teeny tiny little details on it. So I shouldn't need to go 0 0.001, but I'm going to just, I'm going to just leave it there. Keep in mind, if you're running in millimeters, if I just do this, look what happens. My units are exactly the same as far as my tolerance. Now, 0 0.001 millimeters is much tighter than 0 0.001 inches, right? So if you switch from millimeters to inches, you have to adjust this absolute tolerance because this is like a ridiculous tolerance. This would be like if you were doing optics or something like that. A, a realistic tolerance for millimeters is 0.01. You can even, for something large, go 0.1. It just depends on what you're building. But if you're going from in, from inches to millimeters, take a zero out. Make your life easy. Unless you're doing something that's got microscopic little fly eyeballs on it, um, you know this this should be plenty. Now, the reason that we would adjust this up or down <clears throat> is as this number gets tighter, right? As it gets this. This makes joining, matching, continuity, filleting, all that stuff more complicated because the math that now has to calculate out all to all these decimal points. If, if I back this off a little bit, Rhino doesn't have to work quite as hard. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the model is quote, less accurate. It just means that it's accurate to this tolerance. All right. So if you're doing optics and you're, and you're doing a space telescope, um, you, you're going to need to add a few more zeros here. If you're doing a piece of jewelry that has really small details on it, 0.01 might not be nuts. If you're doing something that's a consumer product, 0 0.1, 0 0.01 in that neighborhood. You know, if you're doing something that's bigger than a toaster, you could probably even get away with 0.1. Okay. It just depends on how small the smallest details are, but I'm going to work in inches because I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm a monster. Um, and I'm going to let it ride at 0.01. All right. So I know I'm in the right units. I know I'm in the right. I know that my grid is set up and that these are inches. If I scroll in here and I, and I dimension one of these, this should be an inch. That's a quarter inch. All right. So let's fix the grid. So let's go tools, options. Let's go to grid. Um, I would like major grid lines every inch. All right, and then I'm going to drop this grid down to like, I don't know, 50. It doesn't need to be that big. And my snap spacing, that's fine at a quarter inch. So now my grid spacing, this should be an inch. That's still a quarter inch. Let's see, what did I do differently here? Tools, options, grid. Major lines, every one, minor, every one. There we go. All right, so now when I'm looking at this, and my picture frame disappeared because I deleted it. Let's bring that back. Picture. You guys didn't think you were getting a housekeeping lesson, did you? Uh, there we go. All right, so now when I drop this, I can, I can now take this and I can place this kind of like, it's it's really difficult to build over an orthogonal view. So I don't like building over orthogonal views. So this is just gonna essentially be a reference for us. I'm gonna focus on this scabby little sketch down here, which is the side view, which is gonna allow me to establish proportions and things like that. So I'm gonna place this somewhere over the origin, but you can see right off the bat, I can't see the origin. So what I'm gonna do is pick the object. I'm gonna hit F3, which brings up the object properties. And if you don't have the object properties <clears throat> set up, the F3 button will get you there. And I'm going to go to the materials section, and I'm going to roll down here to transparency. You can see that it's it's 
the the tape for demo image is assigned to a material. It's assigned as a picture. It's self-illuminated, which just means it it just lights up on itself. And I'm going to just grab this transparency, and I'm going to just drag this up so that this fades gently into the background and allows me to be able to see it, but I can still see through my grid and all that kind of stuff. So I have this tape measure on my desk, and and ironically enough, I have a tape measure for measuring my tape measure. So let's just take a let's just take a rough dimension on this thing, and it looks like it's about I don't know, it's about three inches, three point two five inches top to bottom. So let's use that as a as a vague target. So if I take a circle, I hit zero enter. And actually, I want to change layers because I'm on my image layer. So I'm going to move up here, and I'm going to lock this now. Actually, I'm not going to lock it yet. I'm going to lock it later. So let's do a three-inch diameter. I'll do 3.25. And this gives us the approximate dimension. I can just verify this. If I go in here and do a diameter dimension, it's 3.25. So I know this is the right size. So I'm going to grab this image. I'm going to scale it from zero till it's approximately in my target. And this is all really easy to do. I'm just using the scale command. <clears throat> I'm going to type it correctly. And I'm just going to scale this. Super easy. I'm holding down shift. And that gets us the right overall size. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the perspective view. And I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to drop it. Actually, I don't like working in. I had this in the top view. I really want this in the front view. So let's fix that. Maybe that's what I did wrong. So let's grab this and let's just rotate everything. I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate this. 90, easy to do. I'm going to take this. I'm going to rotate this 90. And then I'm going to put it back where it should be, which is up here, holding down shift and dragging. Now I'm going to take this and using Gumball, I'm going to just drag this out of the model space. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if I were to build something over this over this plane, and I'll show you what happens. Um, if I were to build something over this plane and had it straddling this, and I went to shaded view, which I do often, see how the the plane cuts right through the center of the model. It makes it difficult to work on this because this plane is always going to be selected in shaded view. So if I try to select back here, I can't do it because I'm selecting through this plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this plane. And I'm going to slide it out of the model space back here. It's tucked safely out of the way. I can select all objects of my model pretty easily without it having without this getting in the way. <clears throat> So I'm going to take this then, and I'm going to just uh, take this image, and I'm just going to lock it now. And so now it's placed in space. It's easy to ex easy to, to access, <clears throat> but it's out of the way. All right. I need a coffee for my throat here. Hang on a second. All right. <clears throat> so we've established our size, and we need to start kind of analyzing what this thing is going to do, right? So this is this is very clearly just a cylindrical shape, but I'm reading either a curve or a facet on this, followed by a flat plane, followed by some sort of button, and this is either recessed and then protruded or something like that. And, and you know, I've been modeling for so long that I actually spend very little time actually drawing. I'll just get a basic concept together and then I'll start designing in 3D, which is one of the things that I like about Rhino, especially with some of the new sub sub-object selection tools and, and some of the things that you can do with Gumball now. You can actually come through here and iterate <clears throat> and get these things to to happen quickly enough that you can start designing in 3D space as opposed to just trying to copy a drawing, which is the goal, right? We want to be designers. We don't want to be we don't want to just be CAD monkeys sitting here, you know, poking the keyboard with our thumb um, while standing in our chair. That's not what we want, right? We want to we want to sit down. We want to make decisions in 3D, and we want to, you know, come up with something that was better, ideally, than what the original sketch was, especially in my case here for this sketch. But <clears throat> let's 
let's go through the process of just going through and doing some simple drafting on this to get our basic shapes translated into CAD. And I'm going to just start at the quad. I'm going to come down here and drop a line. I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to do a curve from zero here and shift drag gives me this. And I can right click and use that same thing and do this. And then we'll use a center O snap and get this is either the facet or the the tangent point on our curve. I'm reading that there might be another little detail in here somewhere. So I'm going to just pull another one. Right clicking gives me the last command I used. This is defining our display. Um, and then let's come in here and define this line. I'm going to click it and I'm going to grab this little waffle here and drag. Before I let go, I'm going to tap Alt. See that little plus sign show up right there? That gives me a copy. And then that's kind of like, it's not an offset, but it allows me to basically just pull a curve off of that and do what I want. Now, if there's little sub curves or anything in here, um, I'll deal with that later because I may, once I get this into 3D, I may decide that I want a little facet on this or I want to return or I want this button to be recessed or stuff. We can iterate with that along the way and figure out what we're going to do. A command that you might not be aware of is curve boolean, which I really like. This is my, this is one of my favorite tools and I'm going to delete all of the input. I'm going to just click here and here and you'll see that it takes all of these curves and goes boop and combines them together. This, by the way, two second tangent. Again, if you watch my demos, you'll see we do this a lot. Um, if I'm making a gear, this is where curve boolean really rules. So if I go transform array polar, I do this and I throw like, I don't know, let's say 50 of these things <clears throat> around here. Oops, too many. Let's change that to 30. There we go. If I were to make a gear here, right, and, and there's somebody in the audience going, that's not how you make a gear. Yes, I know. This this would have to be smaller, and it would have to have teeth on it. Yes, I know. I understand that. Stay with me. Focus. What, instead of doing this and picking this and going trim, trim, and then having to go through all that stuff, who needs that noise? Watch this. Drag, curve boolean, and then I'm going to, click outside because I want to keep everything outside of this. Boop. Done. And I've got that. All right. Yes, I understand that's not a good gear, but that's not the point of the demo. All right. Curve Boolean. If you haven't used it before, that's something you're going to want to look into. Um, so let's let's add the rest of these details here. And and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plot these out. I just I just threw these on here. I, you know, I just guessed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this quad and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw approximately what this little doodad, this detail is going to look like. And then I'm going to do a transform array polar. And let's say if we were to have to count this, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 of these. You can tell I went to art school because I had to count that. And let's do 12. Let's do it right. <laughs> Center of the polar array is here. 12 of these. There we go. That looks better. And and then we can mess around with this and say, okay, well, I don't really like how 12 is laying down, so let's do let's do nine. That's a little better, but it's still not quite right as far as the spacing. Let's do eight. So I can iterate with this stuff and get it exactly, you know, kind of what I'm looking for, which is some sort of, you know, clearly I murdered the proportions on this drawing. But this one is the closest to being accurate. See how these are lining up? So I'm going to call that one good, and I'm going to run it, and then I'm going to just delete these and these. This one, <clears throat> this one is probably... Eh, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. This one is probably off a little bit, so I may either lose this one or I may actually cheat it. But, you know, for right now, maybe I'll just let it hang out for the time being. Let's draw our recess in here for where this is going to be, the, the little tapey doodad. And 
which is of course the technical term. And then I'm going to grab this and copy paste, shift drag. Why go, why go through all the hassle of picking that from the, the menus if I don't have to? Pick this, this, this. I have a hotkey set up for curve boolean and it gets me this stuff trimmed out really nicely. So <clears throat> I'm going to just trim this up real quick. Any questions so far? Pretty basic stuff so far, right? Let me check the chat. Uh, by the way, these are intended to be interactive sessions. That's why we do these live as opposed to just recording them and throwing them out there. So if you have questions, hit the chat. Make sure that you're asking. I, I'm more than happy to to pause and you know cover stuff. So all right. So we've got this thing basically laid out, and and we and it's centered on the center line, and we can start doing stuff now. So I can take this and if I grab, this is new to V6, see these little dots on the gumball? If I grab this dot and I start dragging, look what happens. I get a, I get a surface. Oh, it gets better. If I drag and hold down shift, it goes both directions. So I can extrude a surface off of that and get a really nice, you know, little thing going on here. I'm going to grab this now and I'm going to center, I'm going to click on the center of this, right click on the center of this. If I right click, there used to be a thing called the bunny tail. In V5, there was a thing called the bunny tail. It was a little, a little line with a circle on it. The bunny tail has been replaced by just right clicking on the center of the gumball. If we have gumball set to snappy dragging as opposed to smooth dragging, snappy dragging will respect O snaps and my O snaps, I run disabled. The reason I run them disabled is because they they don't bother me when I'm working. But as I as I move around in space, all I have to do is hit the Alt key, and the Alt key is the temporary temporary re-enable. So I can do something like this. I can start dragging this, hold down Alt, and O Snap is going to respect this edge, which allows me to drag these and have them line up perfectly with that. Now, if I go to top view, I can see well. I don't really want it to line up with that because I really want this thing to have either a curved or a faceted shape. <clears throat> Haven't decided yet. But what I do know is that this is essentially a flat plane. So I can make this a flat plane. And then I can start playing with this. I can say, okay, well, is this, is this a facet? If I pick the right tool, is this a facet? Does that look cool? Or, I'm going to just hide this for now, does it look better as a blend? Not like that blend, but a blend. I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling the blend a little bit. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock these so they go together. I'm going to iterate with this a little bit and see how that feels. I kind of like that over the facet. So maybe maybe we back it down a little bit like that and we say good. So I kind of, I like this better. So I'm going to stick with this and I'm going to join these together. I'm not even going to worry about the other side because I'm just going to flip it later. I'm going to cut it in half and flip it. So let's, let's look at um, making the face plates here. So let's actually, I'm going to extract the surface for now and let's just focus on it. <clears throat> By the way, if you don't know how I did that, that's I have a tool options alias uh, do, 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 invert hide. I have it set up to a hotkey. The command is underspace invert space underscore hide. That allows you to pick on an object, hit I, I enter, and it it hides everything except what you selected. So let's use a command called split face. Let's type it right. <laughs> this is the face that we're going to split, and we're going to use curves. So we're going to click in the command line and, and split with curves, and we're going to split with these two. And what this does now is this actually splits this face. It doesn't pull it apart. See, it's still a poly surface put together, 
But these faces, if I control shift click on them, are now sub objects that I can do stuff with. And this is really great because I can do stuff like this shift control click. And then I can go to my little extrude doodad and I can extrude a face out of that. Now, the cool thing about this is I can now start to iterate and decide what I want this thing to look like. If I bring everything back and say, you know what, it doesn't make sense for a, for a tool that gets thrown into a toolbox and dropped on the ground and scraped and all that stuff to have a polished, clear lens sticking out proud from the tool surface, right? That's dumb. So let's fix that. Control shift, click. I'm going to then release everything. And then I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag on this handle a little bit. And watch what happens. I can actually edit that face. Maybe I'll do a little more. It was so much fun. I'll do it again. And it's now got a little bevel on it. But watch this. Now I can take this and just drag it in. And it then goes in. And you're like, wow, that's really awesome. And I'm like, yeah, you like that. Check this out. If I grab this little extruder dot, look at this. I can now extrude a little lens out. And I have a bevel. And then I have a little lens. So this is tucked in. But I also have a little piece of geometry here that I can assign a material to and then get an effect later. Foreshadowing. All right. So that'll be our little window display. This is our button. This is a laser level, so of course we have to have a pew button. So when you push the button, it goes pew, shoots the laser. <clears throat> so let's do the pew button. So let's take this, control, shift, click, let go of everything. I'm going to extrude the button straight out. And that's not super attractive, so let's shift, control, click, let go, everything, hold down shift, drag on a scale handle. Drag on a scale handle. And let's make this faceted. Let's not get nuts with the with the pulling of the button out. Actually, I'm going to drop this in and make it a bezel that goes in. And then I'm going to grab this and extrude out a little bit. You're like, we just did that. Shift control click, let go, shift drag. Make a little bezel on that. Now, the reason this works is because these surfaces right here are degree one. If these are degree three surfaces, they start getting a little crazy. And sometimes this, this whole, this whole extrudy thing doesn't work great. If it does, if it, if it does something nuts on you, right? If you, if you modify something and it, and it, the, the connecting surfaces go nuts, just delete them and redo the connecting surfaces. That's the easiest thing in the world to do. So let's let's go one step further. Watch this. Shift control click. I'm going to extrude straight out on this and make a little an additional piece. Shift control click. Let go. Shift drag. And then I'm going to take this. Actually, I'm going to do that some more. Shift drag. And then I'm going to pull this in just a little bit. And I can actually make a little bezeled button. See that? Now this is sharp. I don't know if I want it that sharp, so maybe I'm going to pull it out a little bit. So see how I'm kind of I'm designing in 3D. I'm not, you know, I'm not just I'm looking at this and saying, okay, well, what makes sense? I can even do stuff like this. I can actually tip this a little bit so that it had something like that. That's not a great solution. I don't like that, so I'm going to undo it, but I can do it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. All right. Now, watch this. I don't really like how this button is positioned in here, so I'm going to shift control click, click. I'm going to get all of this stuff. I'm going to go to the front view, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to drag the waffle. I don't think it's really called the waffle, but that's what I call it, so I'm hoping it sticks. And we'll just reposition that button just a little bit. And see, it's updated all of your connecting surfaces. This is still a poly surface. This is all still connected. We haven't done anything to break that. Now, we may decide later that we want to add some more details to this or do whatever we want to do to it. But for now, let's let's call that good. In fact, we may, I, 
you know, it's usually bad design to have a sharp edge on a surface like that. So let's fix it. Let's take these out. Let's extract that and this, and let's join it. And let's scale these down like this. Let's go in the front view. And let's reposition it a little bit. One of my favorite things in Rhino is when you move something, it keeps the shadow of the old thing that was there. And then let's just connect these. My dog has fallen asleep. I don't know if you can hear her in the background, but she's like, I've seen these before. My dog has taken all of my classes so many times. She's an amazing modeler, but she doesn't have thumbs, so we'll never, never see her brilliance. Um, all right, so we've got a lot of this figured out already, right? We can go to shaded view and take a look at it and say, okay, that's starting to that's starting to kind of come together. Maybe it's time that we want to join all of this up, and let's go to the top view. And I I like to drop a line from center, and then just trim. And then I keep this line from center because it makes an easy thing to mirror off of. And then we can join it. And then I can adjust things like, is it too fat? Is it too skinny? You know, what do we, how do we feel about that? I'm going to say two inches. Let's see. I guess I could measure the thing that I have and see how thick that this is. This is 1.6 inches. So I'm going to back this down a little bit. I'm going to thin it up a little bit like that. And I'm going to get rid of this other surface that we iterated with and didn't like. So that's, we're kind of coming together now. So now we need to make this bottom piece <clears throat> and put that together. Or we can start working on this. But I think I want to, I think I want to figure out this relationship first. So let's do that. I'm going to split this surface, these two, this curve and this curve because these are actually going to make up the... Actually, I'm not even going to worry about that. Watch this. I'm going to just trim this. I was coming up with a good reason to do that, but then I thought, that's dumb. Let's do something different. So I'm going to join these all together, and then for the time being, I'm going to just run... I'm going to pick this and run the close command, which just throws a line and closes this open curve. And... I'm going to take this and turn it into a surface for now. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I can pick this now and I can use my extrude icon with the shift key. And what that's going to do is it's going to extrude a solid. If I were to not do that, if I just extruded the curve, it would extrude an open surface, which is fine because I can just pick it and run cap. So it's like, you know, is it faster to do it the first way or the second way? I don't know. I'll let you decide. But that basically gives us, you know, our, our base. And then we can, because it's a separate object, we can play with it and say, okay, does it need to be this wide or this wide or whatever we want to do? So now we have to look at this thing and say, okay, it makes sense for this, this surface down here, if it's a tape measure, for this to be dead flat because we're going to be setting this on stuff to, to measure, right? And it makes sense for this to be sharp-ish. I don't like blades on, on consumer products unless it actually is a knife. So let's knock that off. And I'm going to do that with just a simple chamfer. And that is much too large. So let's drag something that makes sense, kind of like eh, 0 .025. And then I'm going to just enter. 0.025, and we'll run that and just knock that off. And then we have to decide, okay, is this all going to be sharp? Is it going to have some fillets on it? Um, if we're going to do fillets, this is probably the time to do them. Um, so let's let's go ahead and throw just a few on there. I don't want to get nuts with that, but because I think this product overall is going to be fairly sharp. But let's um, let's change our next radius to like point, I don't know, 0.03. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to leave 
this and this sharp and that sharp because I want that block to tuck in there nicely. But I am going to just knock off the edges of this stuff. I typically like to have fillets on things. And these this, these fillets might, too, might be too big, and I don't know that. So let's preview it and see what it looks like. And if you notice, see how it's failed, right? It's done everything, but it dropped out this surface here. And it looks like it actually failed over on this side. So let's do this. Let's set all. Let's do 0 0.025. And it's completing everything, but it's still it's still losing that surface. I could, you know, I could get bent out of shape about that and say, oh, that's terrible. Oh, Rhino it screwed me again. Um, I'm not going to worry a whole lot about it, to be honest with you. I'm going to let this run. And then if it's screwed up on one side and not on the other, I'll just cut this in half and flip it. But let's see if we can, let's see if we can fix it. Let's do 0.02. And it looks like 0.02 actually gives us close to what we want. Although it looks like it's, it looks like it hasn't solved this side as nicely, which makes me wonder, did I miss? I think I missed an edge. I think that's why. So let's add a handle. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. You know what? I think I did. I think I missed that edge. That's why that's screwing up. All right. So let's do it again. Previous edge selection plus that edge. I think that's going to fix it. Yeah. See? It was user error. <laughs> so often the case, which is frustrating, that it's me being dumb and not Rhino. It's so much easier when I can shake my fist at the screen and say, curse you. But it's my fault. So we got that fixed. That's looking nice. So let's go ahead and run it, <clears throat> which we did. And we've got a decision to make. I can... I can, at this point, I can take this object and this object and Boolean them together. Um, Tim's got a question that says, uh, when do you incorporate layer management into your 3D modeling process? If I, if I have a, a very complicated object, then, then I'll start breaking up into layers. Or if I'm doing something like I'm exporting this rendering, to, or if I'm exporting this model to Keyshot for renderings, then what I'll do is I'll actually go through and I'll break the model up into pieces, put each layer on a separate, put each piece on a separate layer, and then export the key shot so that I can apply materials to it. This thing is so simple, um, you know, it 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 really doesn't deserve layers at this point. And to be honest, when we flipped this thing, <clears throat> this it brought. I'm just noticing this. It brought these details over to this side. It doesn't really make sense to have a display and a button on both sides, so we'll fix that later. But um, Tim, to answer your question, uh, you know, I do use layers quite often. In this case, um, I'm running all the entire model is on default, where the image is on a separate layer. Like, say, if I was doing a car, um, I would have the tires on one layer, the rims on another layer, the you know, the engine on another layer. You know, that way, it's so I can manage stuff like that. But this thing is so simple, it 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 really doesn't, you know, um, I deserve is probably not the right word, but it doesn't it's not it doesn't warrant, um, you know, getting into layering. So I'm going to go ahead and just be bold and boolean this stuff together. So now this thing is all one object. <clears throat> and in the past, in V5, when you were doing materials. Um, the, the objects had to be separate in order to in order to apply materials. In V6, you can actually do sub-object material selection, which means I can shift-click a single surface out of a poly surface and apply a material to that without exploding it from the entire poly surface. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. But let's fix this side first. So I'm going to extract this, and I'm going to pull this out, and I'm just going to delete it. And then I'm just going to I'm just going to throw a planar surface in here because that's where we want to be. And maybe what we want to do, maybe this is supposed to have a label or something on it. So let's just, let's do a tiny extrusion to throw that in there a little bit. And then I'm going to, I'm going to shift control click. And then I'm just going to simply delete the outside of that because I extruded it. It turned it into like a little extruded disc and I just knocked off the outside edge. Then I can take these two and join them together. 
<clears throat> see how few times I get over into the modeling tools here? The sub-object stuff is so nice because it allows you to do so many things without, you know, starting to dig over here into the into the tool palette. I mean, we've, you know, we drew a couple of curves, but most of this is just, you know, sub-object and, and, and a few fillets and things like that. I really like that the 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 superpower abilities that that gumball has now <clears throat> so let's um let's look at making the let's see i guess if we look at our image there's there's a little lens detail up here and there's a little button down here we need to do both of those so let's do the button if we go to the front view we should have curves we, which we do and you know i i don't I was taught in design school not to have pointy edges like this, so let's knock the pointy edges off. Um, and we can do that simply with a chamfer. Not that much. Let's do let's do 0 0.02. Let's try that. That's better. Something like that. And there's a secondary curve in here which we can not we can possibly get with sub object selection. So let's um let's take this just for now so we can see it. And let's bring it out here and I'm going to snap it on the face of that just using this edge with snappy dragging. So now what I can do is I can split the face <clears throat> and split face I I really I like this because it works with poly surfaces and it works with um we're going to use the curves, and it works with uh, being able to go in and, and put you know put whatever curves you want. It works really great with this little gumball extruder. So I'm going to shift control click, and I get this new surface, and then I can just extrude it, boop, like that, and that brings the button out. And then I can shift control click, and I can extrude this out, which gives me the connecting surface and the face, which allows me to shift control click, shift drag. And that gives me the little facet. Now notice, it's not quite right, so I'm going to waffle it down here like this. And then maybe what I'll even do is I can even play with, you know, 1D scaling on this. can move it in and change kind of the proportions of how that goes. Maybe I want to pull it down a little bit. Maybe I'll pull it in a little bit. See how easy this is to iterate as far as basic form construction? This is a little bit long. It's, this button sticks out kind of far, so let's fix that. Shift, control, click, click, click. Shift, control, click, click. Come back here and get this face. I'm just going to pull this whole thing back in just a little bit. I went a little nuts with the extrusion on that, so let's stick it back in here like this. So there's that. <clears throat> if we decided that we wanted this to have a little reveal or something around it, we can do that pretty easily just by um, just by sinking, you know, extracting the surface, sinking it in, and then making a new connecting surface between it. But I'm going to leave it just kind of connected to the surface. This is just kind of a a quickie form model. And this is the lock button, and I'm going to be I'm going to be sensitive to the fact that not everybody is right-handed or left-handed, so I'm going to pull this hand. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to extract this, join it back to that, and then mirror at zero. Join it back in, and then that detail is in there now. Now, I'm noticing something here. Two surfaces or poly surfaces joined into one open poly surface. Now, if I'm living right, this shouldn't be open. So let's figure out where. Oh, it's right here because I didn't join this back in. Derp. Now it's closed. Okay. Keep an eye on your on your command line. As you're modeling, you want to make sure that this stuff stays closed. If something is supposed to be closed, Make sure it stays closed. If you're if you're expecting it to be closed, look at the command line after you do a join. If it says joined into an open poly surface, then what you need to do, let's make this open, <clears throat> is you need to go down here to show edges, 
and you need to pick your model and say, where are the naked edges? Well, the naked edges are right here. So in that case, I, I look at it and I say, well, is this a case? If I pick on this and the whole model lights up, then that means that there's something failed on this edge. If I pick this and it's an individual surface, surface additive selection, well, that just means I didn't join it in. So I can join it back in. Now it says it's a closed surface. If I run show naked edges, it says there's 164 edges in this model. None of them are naked. None of them are non-manifold. That means this is closed and watertight, meaning that I can then send this to print. I can send it to Pro-E. I can send it to SolidWorks, all that kind of stuff, all right? So show edges is something that I have in my pop-up because I use it all the time. And by the way, if you're not using your middle mouse button pop-up, you should. Um, the way to customize this is if I pop this up and I grab the top and I wiggle it, it docks. And then I can come over here and I can hold down the control key. And any tool in the tool palettes, in any of the tool palettes, see how that copy link comes up? I just drag them, say, for instance, if I want to put the text tool in here, I'm going to copy, drag it over here, and it plops right in there. If I want to get rid of it, make sure that you're copying. If I hold down Shift, see how it says Move Edit? I don't want to move edit, because if I move edit, it's going to take it from here and put it here. I don't want to do that. I want to copy, which is the control key. I want to copy link, pull it over here. If I decide, eh, you know what, I didn't really want that text object there, now I hold down Shift, I just pull it out, See how it changes to delete? I let go and it's gone. But I didn't delete it from here. If I had moved it from here, it'd be gone. And I'd have to go find it again and reload this toolbar or something like that. But that's how you customize your pop-up. And you can, you can once it's in here, you can drag using the move key, you can rearrange it within your palette, you know, using the shift, which is move, control is copy. But you don't want to move stuff from its original into here. You want to copy it into here. All right, so I this is this is about this is like 99% of the stuff I use to to model in Rhino right here. It's a very very light tool set for doing most of the stuff that I do. <clears throat> All right, so let's make the let's make the little the little tapey doodad on the front here, and it looks like we've got some sort of well, let's make the lens. We were talking about the lens, so let's do that. And we can do that simply by I'm going to extract this face for now just to focus on it. And then if we go to the right view, let's just draft that out. And I'm going to just use a square. And I want to use an edge snap. And it's the center snap is very persistent. So let's get rid of it. There we go. And let's pull this out like this. And I want this to have a circle on one end and be flat on the other. So I'm going to come down here and use a diameter circle, two points. Just hold down shift and it will drop in there straight. And then I can kind of determine where this needs to be. And I'll say it does something like that. And then <clears throat> I'm going to take these two and I'm going to run curve Boolean again. And I'm going to keep this and this and this and get rid of everything else. Then we'll go split face. Using curves. And that gives us a poly surface with this piece broken out. And I'm going to just do a tiny little extrusion. Actually, I'm going to drop it in. Which gives us that lens. And I'm going to pull this. I'm going to actually shift control click and then I'm going to scale this just a hair because right now, see how the inner side of this, actually it's not too bad. Maybe I'll leave it. I was going to say, I thought these were coplanar, but they're not because there's a little fillet on there. But maybe I'll just shift click it, just shift drag it just a hair to give it just a little bit of inset. And then there, there, you know, there's some sort of little lens detail or something on this thing. So if we go to the front view and we take a look at that and say, okay, what's this little lens detail look like? Maybe it's just, maybe we draw something just with a simple curve. We'll make it a little bit interesting just so it looks like something other than And we want
want to make this match the center point, and I turned my center snap off, so let's turn that back on. And there's the center of that. And that's cool because now I can come in here and I can rotate it or revolve it using the center. And I'm going to hit, let's see, go to perspective view. And I want my revolve axis to be this way. So I'm going to shift drag in this direction. And then I'm going to just go full circle. And that gives me that. I'm going to just Boolean these two together. Actually, I'm going to join this all together for now. Boolean these two together. And the cool thing that's going to happen here, see this piece right here? When it Booleans, I'm going to automatically trim that. And then I'll show you what I can do with that. So Boolean this in. Whoops. Went the wrong way. What happened? Anybody know? Someone say normals. Normals are backwards. Let's take a look at what happened. So the normals on this object, and this is you get this by using the dir command, dir, or coming down here and analyzing direction. See how this model is pointing out? See how the normals are pointing out? See how this model, all the normals are pointing in? When I Boolean this together, I pick this one first, which means this is the normals that we want to use. So what it did was it flipped the model. It said it did the reverse thing. So if I flip this, and point the normals out. Now when I Boolean this, it does what I wanted it to do in the first place. All right, so if your Booleans go backwards, it's because your normals are jacked up. Now the cool thing about this is because, because when it Boolean, look at this, shift control click, I get, a little, I get a little secondary in here, which means I can do my little extrudy trick. Shift control click and I can do the scale trick and I can get a little lens detail in there and I can either poke it in or pull it out, and it just gives me a little detail for free that I don't have to do anything about. Isn't that cool? Love the new gumball stuff. So this has a little lock icon on it because this is the this is what locks the tape measure going in and out. So let's do that. <clears throat> and we're going to just draw that. I'm going to go to wireframe for this. Draw that like this. And we'll do a center point, rounded, like that. Copy, paste, shift, drag. Let's take this and this. Let's trim that. I'm going to bump this up just a little bit and just throw a line. Here to here, here to here, join all this up, and to further reinforce our locking theme, because this is what locks look like these days, <laughs> let's put an old-timey skeleton keyhole on it. Why not? That way people will know it's a lock, <laughs> otherwise they'll be completely confused. Curve Boolean, so that's our lock, right? So let's take this and put it someplace a little bit better than that. Let's get here, and I'm going to make a plane out of all of this so that I can take this and bring it out here, and then I'm going to just over-extrude it. I'm going to just do a crazy big deep extrude, and then what I'm going to do is um, actually, you know what? I don't need to do that this time. What I was going to show you is if if the difference between extruding something. Actually, maybe I'll do that with a different. I'll do that with a different example. Hang on. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's take and let's go to the top view. <laughs> Everybody's going. Well, that was a fantastic description. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So let's take this. <clears throat> I'm going to mirror this before I do it so that I can have it on both sides around zero. Let's do it. Let's do it this way. There we go. And then what I can do is just Boolean this out from this using these. And then when I delete this, I've got my little 
detail built in there. And if this is too deep, I can just shift control click, click. I can just pull it out. Say, I don't want it that deep. I want it that deep. Okay. And ideally we'd have to do that on both sides. Ideally we would we would have done that by a dimension so that we know exactly how deep, but we're using we're using demo precision here. So so there's our little lock button. Um, we need to add some text on here. So let's do that. We'll use the text tool. And we'll use a little different font. Let's use what's a good what's a good pew font? Future Earth, that sounds like a good pew font. Let's do it bold. Pew. And these are just coming in as curves. I could have these set to come in as, as objects. In fact, let's do that. Let's do that as solids. Let's do them as solids. We want them to be, I don't know, point too thick. Say OK. So now what this does is this gives us a text object. And then we'll just shift drag to place it. Use the waffle to drag it around. Use this. More scaling, more moving. And then we're just going to use Gumball to stick it in space so that we can see it. And let's just Boolean that out. <clears throat> let's make it recessed. So we're going to Boolean difference that using this. And we can delete that. And then there's our, there's our laser button. All right, so the last thing that we need to make is uh, well, second to last thing we need to make is the little the little tape pull. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a cool trick off of this. I'm gonna actually um, extract using copy, and then I'm just gonna extrude this. Boop. And it's a little bit too short, so or it needs to have a little hook on it. So I'm gonna pull this down, but watch this. I'm just gonna sub object select and drag to make it longer again. See how few modeling tools we're using? <laughs> it's like, you paid for all of these tools, but you don't really need them. You can, you can do so much stuff with just a little bit of tool. All right, so let's make this a little bit cooler. Let's go to the front view of this. And I'm going to just draft out this little X pattern in here. very quickly mirror this at zero and can you watch this control shift click drag tap alt I get a curve yeehaw how cool is that and then I can drag tap alt I get another curve down here so let's do I'm gonna snap that to that intersection snap this to the intersection and then I want to offset all of these in just a hair. So I'll do come over here and offset. I'm going to set this to both sides. And my distance is going to be 0.1. Whoa, that's too much. Still too much. Do that. Do that. And then grab all of this curve boolean boop boop. Oops, got to grab these two. Select curve, curve boolean. Gives me that. And I'm going to just I'm going to blow all of these through here. I could use wire cut. Wire cut only allows me to use one object at a time. So I'm going to grab those curves and extrude them. Grab these shapes and cap them. And then I'm going to Boolean subtract. And I have my Boolean set to keep the, 
the acting object so that um, that way I don't lose it. <clears throat> now, as I'm looking at this, I don't like this because it doesn't make any sense, right? So because if this was a tape measure, I'd have to pull the bottom of this out. So this is dumb. So let's undo it and let's fix it. Let's go to the left view and let's scale this and let's move it up. That makes more sense because now the tape can connect to the bottom. And then it also, these things also have like a little nail notch in them. So let's put that in. And I'm going to wire cut that. No, holy smokes, what's happening? <laughs> I think I just did about eight things there. There we go. Ah, it's got to go the other way. Select cutting curve, select object to cut, set cut point, uh, part to cut away, invert. I want to cut away that part. There we go. So that makes that. My computer's freaking out. Let's do a quick Boolean. All right, that makes more sense because now the tape measure could connect to the bottom of this thing and it could pull out. Plus, this gives us an opportunity. We can apply a material on this and have a little color reveal going through there. Um, and we could even, for the sake of the rendering, we could take this and pull this out and actually add a little tape in here, which I might do later, but let's, let's finish this up. So <clears throat> these guys, I'm... I'm kind of not in love with with the way that this is this is cutting through here. So I'm going to actually grab all of these. And I'm going to rotate them using the rotate tool. And I'm going to just rotate them into a position more to my liking. Something like this. I kind of like that mimicking this line. So even though it wasn't drawn that way, I think I like this better. And so now we have to decide how to do this. And there's a couple of ways to do stuff like this. We could simply, you know, we could simply meathead this and and just extrude a part, you know, and put a ball cap on the end of it and call it done. But I kind of don't like that. So let's <clears throat> let's do something different. Let's go from the center of this object to the center of this object. Let's draw a line. Let's do the same thing here. And this will make sense to one of us in a second. I'm just kind of thinking as I go here. Oops. So now I've got these curves. <clears throat> and what that's going to allow me to do is project these curves onto this surface. And I think that'll be useful, but I think they, they don't need to be quite this big. So I'm going to trim them back using a curve. So let's trim all of these back. And ideally... These should project all the way across the surface. If they don't, we'll just extend them a little bit. But let's give it a shot. <clears throat> so let's project all of these curves onto this object. And let's just take a look in 3D and make sure that it covered the entire surface. And it didn't. See that, how it didn't go all the way across? So that means <clears throat> one of the nice things is, is uh, project curve has history on it. So that means that let me just make sure this is all joined it is all right so it should have it should have chased all the way across here one of them did but the others didn't see how they didn't go far enough so let's fix that so let's go to the original curve and this might be easier to do in 3d space let's use the extend tool <clears throat> and let's just extend these that one's okay. Let's extend this one. There 
There we go. And it looks, I thought that would update, but it didn't. Oh, well. So let's extend this one, too. That way it'll make it easy. All right. So <clears throat> let's grab just these curves for the time being. And this object. Let's hide everything else so that we can see what we're doing. And then let's project these again. So now we get a curve that goes all the way across, like that. So what this gives us an opportunity to be able to do is I can come in here and I can pipe this with round caps. And I can choose kind of how big this detail wants to be. And I can do something like that. And let's see what it looks like. It's not quite as big as what the other detail was looking like. So let's try a different one. Let's try this one, and let's iterate and see which one we like best. Now that one's so big that it actually self-intersected and failed, which, you know, that's not the end of the world. We can actually work with that, believe it or not. Um, if we don't like any of that, we can come in here. Here, let me show you how to fix that. Like, let's say that's that. That's what we decided. This will be a. This will be a nice. So this is awful, right? This is this is like we can't use this. But what we could do is we could pull this in, and we could take this and we could split by surface ISO curve. Actually, let's split this. Let's explode this first and get rid of the worst of it. So it looks like that's kind of nasty. So let's get rid of that. And let's explode and get rid of that. So now I've got these two round caps, but I've also got this, this center section. Maybe what I want to do is pull this up just a tiny bit. And then I can do something like this where I can run a blend surf. And let's get these starting and ending in the same place on the surface. And then you can actually go in. Maybe I even want to add a shape at the top. And I can actually design what this thing is going to look like. Maybe I pull this down. Because this part isn't important. It's inside the surface. What's important is up here. Now, if I like that, because our object is symmetrical, what can we do? We can go to the top view. We can split this in half. We can mirror and join. Close poly surface. That's what we want. Now let's see what it looks like. It looks a little like a Cheeto right this minute. but So now we can say, OK, is that? You know what is what is this thing? Is it is it too big? Is it too small? Is it you know is it work? Is it not work? I think I would like this to be a little more tucked in like that. Now I'm not in love with this relationship right here. So maybe I need to edit that a little bit and decide, let's do without copying. Let's extract that. And let's try this again. Let's see if we can get a better shape out of this. What happens if we tighten this up a little bit? That seems to follow that a little better, right? I like that shape better. I might even want to tuck this in a little bit, like that. I kind of like that that whole relationship a little better. I could even, if I needed to, 
I could even come into the points on this thing. That's getting a little crazy, but I could actually even get into the points on this and start messing around with it and make it, you know, really detailed. But maybe what I'll do is I'll keep this. And because this is the side that we liked, make sure that I'm paying attention to which side we liked. I'm going to trim this again. Mirror. Let's do it right, shall we? I'm going to call that good. So I'm going to get rid of that guy. And then I'm going to just repeat this around the model. So I'm going to rotate, but I'm going to use the copy command around the center. And I'm going to go from here to there to there. like that and that gives us our little knurlies on there now we can play with some other things like maybe knocking maybe this corner needs to get knocked off you know you can decide whether this is you know this to my eye is not entirely awesome I would maybe go in and do a little bit of additional blending on here so let's do it Let's grab these two surfaces. Let's split by ISO curve. And I'm going to split, I don't know, somewhere about here. And then let's split this guy. Let's make sure that we get all the way into that. I want to make sure that I have enough room here. So let's take these and we'll delete them. So we've just modeled a little hole using split by ISO curve. And then we can go back and use a blend surface. We can edit that to make a little bit nicer relationship. So see how this shape looks a little bit nicer as opposed to this like, like that. It's probably a terrible sound that just came through the microphone. Sorry. So I like that a little better. So let's, <clears throat> because this model is symmetrical, we can do things like this. I can pull out this surface and this surface and delete, and then I can grab this surface, this surface, and this surface, and mirror. And we should be able to put the whole thing back together. If I drag select and join, it should. If I do cell open poly surface, whoops, something lit up. So let's figure out what it is. Something didn't join right there. That's odd, but let's fix it. So there's a little peel away in here. So let's fix that. And this brings up a cool opportunity for the quick fix is to come up here and if we go under here, under here, there's split and merge edge. So see this little dot? If I split this edge to match that dot, and then I come up here and split this edge, look what I can do. Boop. I can knit that all together. Now it's a closed poly surface. Now if we do cell open poly surface, these will light up, and they're supposed to. That's kind of expected. So let's set the direction on these, and the direction should be out on all of these. Hit the escape key to get out of there, and then right-click to run it again. And they are. So we should just be able to go through here and Boolean these together. And that one worked. That one worked. I like to do them individually unless there's just hundreds of them because if one of them fails it'll fail the whole boolean but in this case they all worked and so when i do them individually then i can say okay who's <laughs> who's the problem and i can find it pretty quickly all right so we've got this thing modeled um and we're we're actually in pretty good shape to the point where we could we could go ahead and actually start doing some presentation on this how are we at 10 15 oh we're doing good any questions so far
it's just good stuff. Board of tears. So let's do um, let's do a little tape sticking out of here. Everybody's still here, so I'm assuming we're doing all right. So let's do this. I'm gonna use these as snapping guides because tapes always have this little curve in them. And then I'm going to extrude this up to make a surface. And then I'm going to take this surface and extrude it back to make a poly surface. See what I did there? See how I got an object out of this? I'll do it again just so you can see what happened. So if I take a curve and I extrude it, I get a surface. If I take a surface and extrude it, I get an object. If I shift control click a piece of a, of a poly surface or a piece of an object, I can extrude a secondary object. And then I can either edit or extrude. Cool, huh? Super easy. All right, and to make a little gap in here because I, I can't stand it when you do renderings. Oops, sorry. Um, when you do uh, renderings, I can't stand it when stuff just goes into an, a blank face. So let's do a um, let's do a boolean with this, and I'm just going to keep the boolean, and then I'm going to scale this just a tiny bit so that you can actually see the see the gap in there. Actually, that's not that's not reading believably enough. So let's do this. <clears throat> let's duplicate a border of this surface. And then let's shift drag and scale it. Actually, that's not giving us what I wanted. So let's look at that. Let's offset it. We'll do that. There we go. Too much. There we go. So now that I've got this, I can extrude this into this, cap it, bring this back, Boolean difference, this, delete that, and then we've got that's a believable fade right there. All right, so then I can take this object and this object. I'm going to group these so that I can move them together. And then that way I can decide, you know, when I render this, I can decide where, where this wants to go. All right, so let's save this. I was brave and did this entire demo without saving. Um, and the universe was kind to me, so. <clears throat> and let's take a look at some presentation stuff. So let's just, I mean, let's see where we are. So if we if we go into rendered mode, we can see that the Pew brand laser tape is fully in effect here. I'm going to hide my curves on a layer. Tim, here's my layers. <laughs> Change object layer, and then I'm going to just hide those layers so that they're gone. I can hide the image now because I don't need it. And then let's start taking a look at what this thing does in, um, in render space. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. If we, if we go to rendered mode now, um, if I pick this, this entire thing is a, um, is a single poly surface with, these, with this object grouped. And so I can do things like if I look at just this piece alone and I were to ungroup it and we'll go and start making some materials. I'm going to just pick a metal material, drag it to here, and then I'm going to make a new material. Let's call it, uh, let's call it a paint material. And let's make it yellow, a little safetier yellow. Apply 
apply that there. And then I bring this back. <clears throat> now I can start taking a look at this and saying, okay, well, if I, if I do something and apply this entire material, let's say, let's do, let's do, actually, let's make this yellow a little greener. And then let's do another plastic material that's a little safetier. And I drag this here. You can see that that doesn't give me the material breaks that I'm looking for. Now, one of the cool things about this is I can sub-object select and make material assignments based on you know, what I want. So if I make a new material down here, Let's say I make a plastic and it's black. And I shift control click and then I come over here and I right click assign to objects. I can sub object select and assign to that just that object without pulling it from the entire model. Right? So let's make a new one. Plastic. Let's do this like a grayish. something like that and let's drag shift control drag select assign to these and I can start coming through and doing this it can be a little tedious sometimes to do this if the sub object selection and if that's the case if this is slowing you down as opposed to speeding you up then simply extract the objects that you want to assign the materials to and just assign them like you would normally. We've got these little dingle surfaces over here that we made. And let's make one. Let's make a new one that's more of a silvery color. And we'll do this as black. We'll do this. Maybe we'll make a different one. We'll do a red one because it's a laser. Pew! Like that. We'll make the pew button. And in this is a case where I may, now here's the problem with sub-object selection. Watch this. If I extract this, look what happens. All my sub-object selection goes away, which is a bummer, right? So you kind of have to make up your mind one way or the other. So in this case, that's probably a bit of a drag. So let's go ahead and let's do it a different way. So let's do this. And now I'm only going to sub-object select the bottoms of these buttons. I'm going to make a new material. And I'm going to leave that white. So that is a good case for sub-object selection right there because this is this is like this. This wasn't probably a great idea for that. So let's go ahead and let's just extract. It wasn't a bad idea. It just wasn't the best idea. Let's get all of this stuff. And we can break this stuff up by material then. So let's get all of that and join. And we'll assign that to this. And then this, we could probably get away with sub-objecting this. So let's do this. So that works. 
the lock button. Maybe we'll leave that. Maybe we'll make that black. And then maybe what we'll, we'll even do is maybe we'll do this stuff as a color. so that it looks like some kind of overwrap. Notice the quality of the display in 6. This is rendered mode, but this is a working mode. You can model in this in this because the performance is good enough that it's not going to slow you down. So if you wanted to model this way, you could. We're not going to stop you. So I'm just extracting all this stuff. And then I'm going to join it. And then I'm going to assign a material to it. So that gives that over wrap. Now we just have to deal with, um, with uh, and maybe I'll even sub-object select this. I kind of want to make that black just to look cool. Yeah, I like that better. So now we have to deal with this um, this piece in here, and and I may I may have jumped the gun on my last sub object assignment. So let's I did. So let's join this back up. We got to put this one back. That's the only bummer is if you change if you change the poly surface, the sub objects lose themselves. So so now I've got this little lens object in here, and I'm gonna make in order to make this convincing, I need to um, I need to actually make this the way this would be made. So in this case, this has an opening on the back. So I'm going to make a um, I'm going to make a plastic material, but I'm going to make the plastic material almost completely transparent with a little bit of a lens on it, like that. And then I'm going to cap the back of this. And this piece, I'm going to assign a color map to. Or maybe I can even do it with a decal. Let's just do it with a decal. I'm going to make a new one that's plastic. Leave the transparency and stuff there. But then I'm going to assign a decal to this, which I'm going to do up here. So if I go to my properties and I say decal and I go plus, Decals have been completely redone, by the way. They're they're really nice now. And I'm going to do this display numbers. It's going to be a planar map. And I'm just going to drag it onto the page here. Now, I missed. So I'm going to turn on the widget. And I'm going to just adjust it with Gumball. All right, so there's my display. Now I can shut the widget off so it's not in the way. If I bring this back. Now you can see that the reflection is happening correctly over the lens. The parallax of the lens to the to the display is correct. And that way it starts to look you know the way it should be. And I should probably have some sort of label over here. Um, you know, we could work something up in Photoshop or something like that. Maybe we put a Rhino logo on it or something. Let's do that. Um, so let's take and I think I'm going to lose a sub-object selection when I do this, but pull this out. And let's go this way. And let's, put, let's throw a decal on this. I think I have a Rhino logo somewhere. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Like that. Turn the properties on, shift drag to scale it. Shut the widget off. It's positioned nicely. I don't like that, I don't like that color, so let's change the color if we go back to the materials palette. <clears throat> Just make that black. And now we've got our Rhino branded Pew laser level.
measuring doodad. If we wanted to, we could come in here and sub object select this and this to pop these out a little bit. See how flexible this is now? It used to be that this kind of stuff was really a hassle and it's now really, really nice. So maybe now what we need to do is add a little bit of this. Maybe this object needs a label. So if we go to the top view and we apply a decal to this, go back here, go to decals plus, I think I've got a tape measure image out here somewhere. Do that, turn the widget on, and scale it. Make sure you scale the widget, not the object. <laughs> you can also use the scale tools with this. So we can just do this. Take a look, make sure it looks all right. In that case, it looks fine. So let's hide it. And then we can just decide how much of that we want to show. Ideally, we would want 12.4 of it to show up. <laughs> Neat. We'll say we were using the laser. How about that? Pew. And then if we, you know, if we wanted to do something crazy, like make this look like it's got a laser coming out of it, we can do, we can find the center of this. Come on. Where are you? There we go. We could do something like that. We could pipe this. This is going to be really cheesy, but... And then take this and make a new material. Let's do, we'll do a plastic material, we'll make this red. And then probably what I would do is in post, I would, you know, do some kind of glowy thing on this or come down here and change this to a custom. And I would make the self-illumination part of it on and the emission color I'd do red. And that way it looks a little pewier, like that. All right, so that is, that's most of this thing is pretty much done now. And so the last step would be to then go into ray trace mode, which is new to V6. I should probably save this, but. <clears throat> And then we just set up our rendering the way we want it to be. And it looks like decals are broken again. Thought we had that fixed. <laughs> I've got a I've got a bug report in for decals. It looks like something got broken again. I'll have to re-update that. I'm running a I'm running a newer up I'm running a newer version of six than everybody else's. This is an internal build, so something got broken. I'll have to fix it. But anyways, this is our this is our ray trace of the finished model. All right. Any questions on any of this so far? Other than why decals are broken? That's my question. Any questions on anything you've seen so far? If not, um, then I think we're actually in pretty good shape to call it. Um, this is pretty much all I have to show for you today. If I was going to print this thing, one of the nice things about sub-object selection is, is if I were to go through and sub-object select all of this stuff, um, then um, when I printed it, I wouldn't have to make a, sec a second model. But in this case, what I would do is I would drag select everything, make a copy of it, join it, make sure that everything's closed 
and then um, and then send it to the printer from there. All right. Pew. Pew pew pew. All right. Any other questions? If not, we'll call it. This is pretty much all I have to show for you today. You guys are quiet. I'm used to everybody yelling at me when I do these things. Anything? All righty. Um, oh, James, my name's Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer with McNeil. Um, this is this is my info if you're interested in me. I also run um, a design consultancy called the Outside Digital Art and Design. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, gumball mo gumball extrude is awesome. Fantastic. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a, a few tricks to throw into your bag. And uh, and thanks for thanks for sharing your morning with me. Um, we're doing pretty much the same demo tomorrow, but for the Mac folks. If there was something in this that you missed, or you wanna you wanna <laughs> sit through it again, you're more than welcome to. But we're doing a we're doing a, a very similar demo to this tomorrow, um, using the same object uh, for the Mac side tomorrow. All right. Um, if there's no other questions, I'll let you roll and uh, get back to your day. Go make great things. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.